Hi, I'm Jenna, and today I'm going to show you the basics of circuit bending, which is essentially taking something apart like a battery-powered toy or something that has pre-programmed sound in it and modifying that sound by messing with its circuitry to make your own custom electronic instruments. So what it involves is taking things apart, looking carefully, and recognizing certain electronic components, but a lot of it is just playing around. So what I'm going to do is give you some tips on what to look for and some suggestions for things that you can add into the circuitry to make your own modifications. There are some tools that you might find useful if you want to get more involved in circuit bending, and I will mention those, but for this basic demo, you don't need anything other than your own hands to change the sound like I just did. Before we get started though, I want to mention safety. Only ever use battery powered toys or battery powered objects like this greeting card when you're circuit bending. You never ever want to use something with a plug that plugs into the wall. That could kill you. You want to stick only to batteries and the range would be somewhere between, you know, 1.5 volts like a double A or a triple A battery. Uh, 1.5, this is a three volt coin cell, like a watch battery, something like this. Uh, three volts and nine volts. Most toys you're gonna find are between 1.5 and nine volts and you'll be safe in that range. Don't ever, ever use anything that uses a plug. So keep safety in mind when circuit bending. Results. So let's get started. Now I've played with this too many times, so it's not actually working the way it should, but this little tab, if you have a card like this, you can just remove that. And what I was doing was just pressing down here to turn it on. And there's Shania Twain. Now the other thing I had to do, because this was an old card, was the battery I replaced. So it's a little loose because I pulled these two prongs up on either side here and I slid the battery, the original one, this is the original one, you can see it says three volt on it. I slid that out and I put in a new one. And you might have to do this if you have an old card like that. And if it's not working, it's most likely because it just has an old battery, less likely that something came detached. So you can just get a new battery for it. Uh, you could order these online or you could get them at a drugstore. You just need to make sure that you're putting the positive side, typically the positive side is up and there's a plus sign. The negative side is the side with little bumps on it. And I just slid it in there the same way the other one was. And you might have to press it down or maybe tape it down in place so that it doesn't wiggle around. I'm just holding it in place. And then again, this is the switch. So now it's just playing Shania Twain. But how did I know? How did I know that if I went in with my finger right in here, that I would change the pitch? Well, that's what I'm going to show you. So this is the battery, this is our power, and this is our switch, which is just a break in the circuit. These two components here are resistors. This is a capacitor and here is my speaker. So that's where the sound is coming out. I'm not going to talk too much about the capacitor at all. We're not really going to get into that. We are looking for a certain type of resistor, which they're typically going to look like this, like a peanut shape with stripes on it. Sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're tan. These ones are called through hole resistors. There are also surface mount resistors, which look a little different and they're a little harder to play around with. And I will show you an example of a surface mount resistor in this card I have. So the other thing on here is this blob. And this blob is important. We're not gonna mess with it because we can't, but it, underneath that blob, which is epoxy, is like a like a resin or a glue that is where the brains of the circuit are so the chip where the song is actually programmed operates using what's called a clock signal and 
the clock signal is what we're going to mess with by playing around with the resistor that changes the timing. The timing, which is controlled by the resistor, changes the pitch of our sound. So if there's less resistance, the clock goes faster and therefore the pitch of the sound is higher. This resistor is known as a fixed resistor. It has a value that doesn't change. But when I put my finger in there, the resistance value changes because my, my skin is conductive and it allows electricity to flow through it. But depending on how much pressure I put on my finger, if I lick my finger and I dampen it, that also changes versus this finger is drier. There's not the same change. I've created a variable resistor just using my skin and having less resistance is going to change that, that clock. And this component is crucial in that particular circuit. So what we wanna look for is that timing resistor. And the easiest way to look for it is literally just lick your finger and then go ahead and stick it in there and see, see where it changes. So that's the simplest way to circuit bend. Now, something else you can do is you can get clip leads and these are essentially, if you've ever seen jumper cables for a car, they're like mini jumper cables. They just have two little clips on either end and a wire in between connecting them. And what you can do with these is, I know this resistor is the timing resistor. I'm gonna go in here. And now the two ends here, I should have the same effect if I bridge them with my fingers. Go ahead and do this. So now instead of touching the resistor there, these two ends are where I'm messing with it. So what I can do is I can start to play around with adding other components. Maybe I don't want to actually stick my fingers into the circuit. Well, this here is a variable resistor known as a potentiometer. And what it has inside of it is a wiper that goes between these two points and changes the value. So 100K is the resistor value. So 100,000 ohms of resistance. And if I connect between the wiper and one side, I should be able to, just like a dimmer switch, like a light switch, change the pitch. Let's get it to start going. Okay, there we go. So that's typical. If things don't immediately start working, you just kind of have to play with it a little bit. So I'm going to hold my battery back in place since it is loose. Turn it on. And then it runs out, so I need to start it over. So. Faster one direction, slower the other. So that's the simplest way to circuit bend. I do want to show you this card supposed to be playing We Will Rock You. And you can kind of see how this mechanism works a little better. So it's off because the paper is between those two points and it turns on as that slides out. Now, where's my resistor? I just told you what it looked like, what to look for, but there's nothing that looks like that on here. There's a capacitor, there's my battery, there's that blob. Well, okay, that's unhook this and pull this up if you don't want to hear that sound and then you know pressing this down will turn it on 
there are on a lot of these circuits indicators so like SPK speaker C1 C2 those are little tiny capacitors we're looking for that I'm gonna guess that R2 that's our resistor this is called a surface mount resistor which means it's mounted on the surface of the board rather than through the holes of the board I'm gonna guess that if I put my finger over that R2 I'm gonna change the sound so I'm gonna maybe getting a little bit there's also an R1 over here I could try that one that seems to be a little more promising however it's hard to tell because the batteries are dying so this battery holder is a little different it might be a little more challenging to get this battery out of here so what I can do is pry it up just try to pry that battery out there it is and let's see if I can put in a new one and get a better result oh there we go okay so I'm gonna try to pry that back in place Oh. Okay. I'm going to hold it down for the purposes of this demonstration. All right. So, my battery is fresh. This is my switch. I need to put pressure on both of them because I've uh, messed with it enough. Okay, I gotta hold them in place. So it's R1. R2 doesn't appear to be doing anything. Sometimes you can actually short it too. So if you short the circuit, it might just turn off and you just need to restart it. So something over here, I'm shorting. I'm going to stick with where I see R1. So that is how you would find a resistor if it doesn't look like the one in the previous card. Most of them might look like this now because components are getting smaller older circuits um, you might actually be able to find the chip so that's the epoxy blob here's an example of what the chip might look like this is a keyboard probably from the 90s or 80s here's what the chip would actually look like something like that where the sound is actually programmed into whatever it is so like I said this is a keyboard um, if I put a battery on here, this is 9 volts. This is the back of the keyboard, so you're not, the keys are under here. So that, that glitchy sound, that is because I've messed with the chip. So I'm still able to get some of the sound it's supposed to make. But I can also go in here and get some other sounds to happen. So you get the idea. Um, older electronics, older electronic toys or instruments like this, you might be able to actually find the chip and mess with that. Um, and then all these are resistors in here. Um, and you can start to play with that if you want to go a little bit further. 
Um, and again, this is an example of like, if you, whoops. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off, but. What I was gonna say is an example of um, if you want to solder, if you want to learn to solder, it's a good technique to learn because once you identify the sweet spots, you can go in there with a wire and solder a wire in place so that you get a little bit more control. But part of the fun of circuit bending is not really having that much control. You're working with the circuit and what it already has within it and you're playing back and forth. So again, we found our timing resistor. Um, this is, you know, this is from a card. I have one other that I pulled out of a card and modified a little bit. This one, here's the, the switch, because I haven't talked much about switches. I do want to talk a little bit about switches. There's my switch and just pressing down on it will turn it on. So you might notice there is an LED on here, a light emitting diode. So I added this LED so that I could see when it was actually on, which tells me if my speaker, which is over here connected to these wires, that if my speaker, if there's something disconnected over here and this light's still turning on, I'll actually be able to identify that maybe I need to resolder my speaker or there's not a good connection there if this light is still turning on. So that's my capacitor, that little blue resistor, that's my timing resistor. There's that blob that has Super Freak programmed into it. And here I've got my switch. Now, one fun thing to do with a switch is I've, in this case, I've soldered on some wires here, but if you have alligator clips, so pretend like those wires aren't there, you can create your own switch just by connecting. So there's a little pad of conductive material there, this little lever here, I'm going to connect onto here. I could also connect back here. That's those two. So that's my break in the circuit. So if I put these two together, it should turn on. And it does. So that means I can make my own switch. And one fun way of making your own switch is just using um, what's on hand that is conductive, that allows electrons to flow through it. So aluminum foil is one readily available material. So just by putting these two together, if you have some felt or some squishy kind of material like foam, if you put that in between with some holes in it, I put this here, I can create like a glitchy switch. So I'm, I need to press down a little harder to turn it on now. There's also other switches. If you really get into opening things up and taking things apart, you can start to take switches out of existing things. So just cutting things out. This one has a different, you know, I'm pressing down on it and I'm holding down. It doesn't actually allow the circuit to continuously play the song. Just kind of starts the beginning over and over. You could even do something like add a light switch. So that's just turning things on and off, having fun with the kind of switch you want to add. Now, what is this thing here? Well, we know that that's my timing resistor. This here,
This is a switch called a momentary push button. Which means it's only on when I push down on it. Otherwise, it's it's off. So when I'm pressing down, what's happening is rather than going through that fixed resistor that's controlling the timing and the pitch, it's going straight through these wires. So when I press down, path of least resistance, it's favoring my button. So that's how I'm getting that glitchy sound to happen. Now, that is a lot different than if I would go in with my finger. You can hear the, you can hear the difference. If I can get it to start again. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with my finger. Oh. So if I put different amounts of pressure using my skin, I can change the sound. So that's essentially changing the pitch, knowing that your skin is con can conduct electricity and can act as a variable resistor. You can also add in other things like this here is a pressure sensor. Um, this is a light sensitive resistor. So the resistor value changes based on how much light is flooded into it. Um, and you can experiment with these. The last thing I want to show you is something that you can take apart, but you will need screwdrivers. So I recommend if this seems up your alley, getting some precision screwdrivers, which is just a set of both um, flathead and Phillips head screwdrivers and again making sure it's a battery powered toy this one I think I got at a dollar store for maybe like five bucks um, so it takes double A batteries each are 1.5 volts 1.5 times 4 is 6 so I'm working with 6 volts here and when you go to open up something like this, you just have to find the holes <laughs> where the screws are. And I recommend having like a little solo cup to keep your hardware in as you take it apart so that you don't lose it while you're working, especially if you don't intend to immediately put it back together. So a little cup like this is perfect. And just going in and opening it up, taking all the screws out. I typically go around um, loosen them all and then I tip it over carefully. And you do want to make sure that you are looking for like the right size screwdriver. So you might need, depending on what you're taking apart, you might need a slightly larger screwdriver. You don't want to try to take out um, screws with the wrong tool because you could strip them and then you can't put it back together. So now that this is coming apart, I'm going to tip it over carefully. and catch all the screws there we go put them in my little cup so that they don't roll away and carefully lift i don't want to rip it apart because it might wires <laughs> so i'm going to slowly open it because usually i know the batteries are back here these wires are pretty delicate. So what I have is all right. 
So you can see I've got the green wire here, positive, the black wire, negative. So that's helpful to know that that's where if these would ever come detached, you could grab your clip leads and you could just clip here. And I'm gonna do this so that you can actually see it. So these, these wires are super delicate. A lot of toys come with really delicate wires and they will just snap right off. So let's say that happens. Let's say you rip this apart and these just come undone, completely pulled away from the board. What do you do? Well, if you have these, you can clip them. I know the green wire is positive. Clip it to this board. And then the black wire is negative. Clip it here. And then those flimsy wires don't matter and I don't need to worry about that. Now, it still works. Um, a lot of times circuits are gonna have or a toy like this is gonna have circuit boards that are also screwed in place. So you can go in and you can take out more screws. If you don't intend to put it back together, you know, you can create a whole new instrument. Just pop out the components. Like this is just sitting in a speaker. It's just sitting in this little plastic, um, <laughs> this little plastic uh, circle here. If I carefully lift it out, got my speaker. It's on that board. And then this is my keyboard here. These resistors are just my keyboard. So if I take out these screws on either side, I could actually get rid of I've got some little plastic bits from the switches. These are the switches. So these little plastic caps, they just sat on there. I could put them back on if I wanted to or not. But those are, one of these is my on off, one of them is volume. So this is now just a case. I'm gonna put it over here. What I have are the guts. I've got my speaker. This is, you know, just going to power. I've got my speaker, I've got my switches. And then I've got my keyboard. So the keyboard's pretty cool. It's just a bunch of resistors of different values. And this whole bar here, which is this, it's soldered to this yellow wire. That's I'm gonna guess that's my my volume I think so this is my um, on off this is volume and I'm not sure what this one is But that yellow wire is connected to this whole conductive bar here. So if I wanted to play around with it, let's say I disconnected this yellow bar, put a clip lead on the end. I could go around here and I could start getting creative putting other conductive material and just so that's about it I hope you found these tips helpful and know that there are a lot of books and resources online about basic electronics and going further with circuit bending. So have fun, be safe, and enjoy.